Okay, so what are we into today at the lake? We're uh, in the process of trying to get our swim raft in for the season. This happens to be a 1973 Weirs uh, 8 by 10 with 19 inch aluminum tubes. And uh, one of the things that comes up a lot, especially with new people at the lake, is how to anchor a swim raft. You know, people come out and they think you're going to anchor a swim raft like the way you're going to anchor a boat. And even trying to anchor your swim raft like a big boat will not work. Um, you need to use a, a primary and a secondary anchor. So that wave action, I'm going to set this out, we're going to come back to this. So that wave action can't move your raft. So. You need two piles of weights. These crescent wrenches are piles of weights, okay? And the two piles, we always hook our, we use, we use off the shelf um, 12 inch deep cinder blocks because they're easy to get and they're easy to work with. And because they're such a non-uniform shape, they turn into a jumble on the bottom of the lake that won't drag hardly at all. So what we use is we use, uh, five of them for our primary weight and we use three for our secondary weight and the reason you do this is that with 19 inch tubes this swim raft can um, generate over a thousand pounds of lifting force and in a in a heavy swell the the calculated buoyancy of the tubes which is about a thousand pounds there's around um, 20 cubic feet of space in in each one of these tubes so each one's got about a thousand pounds of lift so you've got a ton of lift or you got a ton of buoyancy in these tubes but you get about two and a half times that in dynamic action from a big wave so that means the, the raft will pick up 5,000 pounds if it's directly under it in a big wave. So I don't know about you, but I don't want to try to get a pile of weights bigger than 5,000 pounds. <laughs> You're going to have to have like four Cummins engine blocks or something for your weight pile. And then you're going to have to have a, uh, you know, a way to get that out in the lake and place it. So um, this system, we've only got about uh, a little over 200 pounds here. And we've only got about 150 pounds in our in our secondary pile. And what happens is, when when the waves come, and it, you know the wind is blowing this way, right? And when the waves come, the raft all it can do is pick up this secondary pile. It works this up and down, but this secondary pile makes it so that the raft can almost never get any force on this. The, the main set of weights. And the way you know that's happening is this set is always up on top of the sand. You can, we can swim out there right now, we can see this set. There won't be any weeds around this set. The, the, the raft moves this set in the waves. This set hasn't, now this set that we've got out here has been out here since the 80s, so they've been there a long time. But this set's completely buried. You can't even see this set anymore because it doesn't ever move. The raft will actually walk this around the primary depending upon what the wave action is doing we get those wake surfer morons out here now they're having wave contests to see with their silly car motor how big of waves they can make and um so we get wave action in a lot of directions that we never used to when it was just wind driven waves but uh so then the thing that becomes important is you know we use chain down to both the secondary weights and we use chain in between the secondary and the primary weights but the chain does not absorb any shock loading so what we and this isn't the, as big a chain as we use this is just a piece I had laying here so what we use to absorb shock is a doubled up section of galvanized cable and the thing about this cable is people say, oh, the cable is stiff. What does that do? Well, this cable actually is as flexible as a rubber band compared to that chain. And so this cable takes all the shock 
when the when the raft comes up on top of a big wave and it grabs against that weight, this cable just takes all the shock out of it, right? And it, the issue is that the cable is is a wear item. The combination of corrosion and that constant movement means that you know this cable's been in the lake for around I think nine or ten years, and you can see that if we tried to use it again this summer, it's it's not it's not gonna be happy right it's gonna take very little load to part this cable at this point so we're in the process of you, know, you can see the water line right where it's you know this is like brand new here where it's not in the lake it would last a thousand years where it's not wet um, so we're in the process of building a new shock absorber and then we're gonna swim this thing out and hook it up but that's really the solution to swim raft weights, right? Is you gotta have two piles. You wanna separate them by about, most of the time what they say is that there should be as much distance between the primary and the secondary as the depth of your water. So if your water is 10 feet deep, those piles should be 10 foot apart. That means that it's 20 foot of chain between the raft and the primary weights, and with that kind of angle, it'll never budge those weights. Never move them. And okay, so we've got our uh, cable shock absorber put back together, and my cameraman rem reminded me that uh, it might not be common knowledge how strong some of these materials are, but this is um, 719 galvanized aircraft cable we're using. Um, Braking strength on this is around 9,500 to 10,000 pounds, depending upon what brand it is, where you're getting it. Um, you can see that because of the way we build them, at the minimum point, we've got three strands. So, um, you know, even if we used a 10 to 1 uh, safety factor, we've probably got 3,000 pounds of load carrying capability here at a 10 to 1 safety factor because we've probably got probably take 30,000 pounds to break these three strands together um, so basically the way we rig this goes underneath our swim raft uh, it's connected to one of the steel galvanized steel cross members we've got a overhead lifting rated American made forged eye bolt that we put this we put a master link in right and again this master link is a little war but the <laughs> breaking streak on this master link when it's brand new is like 46,000 pounds so we're not gonna get too we're not gonna get too obsessed about this right it'll swimmer have to rip itself apart before this will break um, so we go uh, that forged eye bowl, a master link, our shock absorber, then we use 3 8 uh, plated chain in the water. And uh, we go, like I said, from our secondary weights to our primary weights. And since we've been using that system at least 25 years now, we haven't had uh, a loose raft since. Um, really our only the, the wear item in this is the cable as we showed you eventually our chains will wear out but the you know the lifespan on the chains look like it must be about 30 years our, the chains getting some wear on the links we looked at it when we pulled it up uh, this spring and uh, you know eventually we'll have to pull the weights all the way up before the chain gives out we what we'll act what we did to put it in and what we'll do to get it out is we will go out there with a, a come along and hook in our eye bolt under the swim raft we'll swim down and hook the chain you know close to the weights at the bottom and we'll pull those up and then we'll we'll chain those weights to the bottom of the raft then we'll go down and get the buried primary set and we'll winch those out of the sand and hook those to the bottom of the swim raft and then we'll drag the whole thing in here and rebuild the weights. But, you know, I see these crazy systems, especially with these plastic swim rafts where it's like, you're gonna hold it with a 20 pound anchor 
And, and that's the difference between you're going to hold it for an afternoon while your kids swim on it on a nice day versus this system. Biggest, baddest storms to come in 25 years can't bug this. Right? And I, I don't like doing anything once, and I really don't want to do it twice. So this is a little over-engineered, but this is really a proven system. So that's, you know, if we could, if we could figure out a way to cost-effectively buy stainless steel cable and you can't use mild clamps, you can't use mild thimbles because of the electrolytic action, so, and, and we actually would have to put some kind of an insulator between our stainless steel cable and our mild steel chain, too, to prevent electrolytic corrosion of the mild steel chain. But if we could figure that out, which we haven't figured out yet, we could probably improve the lifespan of this cable into 20 plus years too. But so far, just inspecting this, replacing it, you know, this was all of about like $12 worth of cable. So it's not that big of a deal. So we're gonna swim this out and hook it up.